Hey everyone, so I meant to cover this CBC, it's actually not an article, it's actually from CBC Radio. And you know, as someone who was a former truck driver, until big government destroyed my career and my livelihood, as a truck driver, especially when I was in Canada, traveling along those many, many miles across this country, yeah, I listened to CBC Radio. <laughs> I mean, it is Canada's national broadcaster that you can get from coast to coast. And if you like to listen to um, things that have to do with politics or philosophy or the news of the day or culture or history, CBC News does have some decent programming, in particular on the radio side of things. But, like I said, you also got to understand that just like the old adage of even a broken clock could be right twice a day, and just because these people that put forth these programs do produce them in a, in a manner that, like I say, I, they're, they're well done. Some of these people are articulate. But once again, what, to me, the big, I, like I say, I like to step back and look at the big picture. And what are the philosophical underpinnings? What are the principles? What's the ideology? What are the premises that these people espouse as the basis for their understanding for human cooperation or cohabitation? That is a big, big, big story for me. Like I say, that's that big picture stuff. And what I have come to learn over many, many years of listening to CBC, and not just the radio personalities, but those on television or in the news department, is you do have, and this is, I mean, it's not, it's not even, like, don't even try to deny it at this point, because, and I know people still try to do that, but it's like, really, though? Anyone that's trying to deny that the CBC has a very, very leftist bent as far as their type of reporting and how they cover stories or issues or topics, I mean, come on. I mean, to deny that is to literally to say that, that the sun doesn't shine. I, I mean, you can continue to say that as much as you want, but very, very few people are believing you anymore. So, and a smaller, smaller portion of the people that even believe you are even starting to question themselves. So... You're failing on that level already. It's the thing with these people. At least own up. I mean, come on. If, if, you, if you're going to pretend to be brave and, or bold in any way, and, and you really care about your ideology so much, and you think that's important, and that's the way you know uh, Canada should be governed based on that ideology, then just, just stand behind your convictions. Stop skirting the gray area. Stop playing those games where you, you're trying to deny what you truly stand for, but yet everything that you do suggests that you are a bunch of authoritarian collectivists. You believe in the state. Your religion has, and because a lot of you people on the left side of the political spectrum have rejected some of the uh, orthodox religions such as Christianity or Judaism and such, yeah, you've, you've found somewhere to congregate to where you've created your own little cult, your own new modern religion. And that religion is the religion of statism. And your hypothetical or metaphorical pope is Karl Marx, the main figurehead of authoritarian collectivism. Once again, always brought to us under the umbrella, under the pretense of some form of benevolence. But it doesn't take much. Just All you got to do is just barely scratch below the surface, right? Just barely get a little bit below that top portion that they try to represent as far as their ideology. Just get, like I said, just... Barely below the surface, and you see, ooh, that's some ugly, ugly stuff. That sounds good in theory. Well, at least that part of f everything's free, or all oh, the workers are all going to rise up against the bourgeoisie or the corporate class or the business owners, right? I mean, it's it, it all sounds good in theory, but like I say, only it only sounds good like as a theory, and only if you haven't scratched below the surface. Once you've scratched below and seen. What, what's represented below that service is, hoo, 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 yeah, I don't want nothing to do with it. I mean, if you're a reasonable, well-adjusted, moral, and even slightly intellectual person, you, you know darn well. Actually, no, I shouldn't say the intellectual part, because we actually have a lot of intellectuals. But like I say, these intellectuals are ideologues. I mean, just, just imagine going to, you know, even, let's just, let's just flip this to, the, to, the, to the, what you would perceive as the right side as far as politics. But let's just talk about those who are indoctrinated into some of the religions that are under the banner of Christianity. Just just try going up to these people. And <laughs> these leftists know damn well what I'm talking about. Is just try going up to some of these uh, religious fundamentals and try to tell them, yeah, the earth's not really 6,000 years old. <laughs> and, you know, gays should be allowed to exist, right? No, it wasn't too long ago where, no, they, 
these ideologues on the right side or the religious fundamentalists were, were very much all about saying, no, gays should be placed at the proverbial back of the bus or not even accepted into mainstream society. So, uh, but you, could you imagine trying to tell those zealots that, you know, you, what you're doing, even you, though you're trying to suggest that you come from a mannerism of, or a pretense of benevolism, <laughs> the fact that you try to want or want to cause harm to these people that, you know, if you're gay, or as long as it's voluntarily, as long as the person that you're having your gay relations with are doing that voluntarily, why do you want to cause harm to people that are doing things that are voluntary? Even though you don't, is it because you disagree with how they want to do their things in their own life? Yeah, that's what the religious fundamentals of the past were all about, which is why a lot of these leftists rejected that kind of top-down, ideologically driven authoritarianism and the rejection of freedom. But now they've created their own form of that same. They, they didn't ever give up the authoritarianism or the collectivism. All they gave up was that old school style of religion and they've re reinvented or invented their own today, which is called statism. And like I say, their main preacher, the person they look up to most is Karl Marx and his philosophy, or should I say his ideology of Marxism, of authoritarian collectivism. So at the end of the day, they've never rejected religion. They haven't rejected mysticism. They've just invented their own. And they call that statism. And like I said, folks, the people that are, you know, part and parcel of the CBC corporate establishment, that crown crony corporation that, once again, I'll say this again, one more time in this video. Yeah, it functioned under a forced wealth and income redistributed model. Well, you don't, you don't have any choice whether you want to support the CBC. No, no, no. Government has written into legislation in the law that they can take money to pay for the CBC from your paycheck, from your income, without your express permission. So once again, like I say, I mean that alone should already explain to you that obviously these people are not moral and are very much all about authoritarian collectivism. And make no mistake, they spend a lot of time and they use this billion plus dollar crony crown corporation to propagate that message to the masses which is why you're seeing a large and substantial portion of the Canadian people who fall in line with that particular ideology and if you need any evidence <laughs> although you really shouldn't need any more at this point in time but eh, I'm going to give you more anyways because hey that's what I do when I'm trying to build a case I make sure I've got all the evidence that's needed and necessary to show just how solid the ground is I'm standing on when I talk about the things I talk about Headline on the CBC News Radio, Ideas Afternoon, Reclaiming Marxism in an Age of Meaningless Work. Capitalism keeps us from creating value in life, says Yale professor. Like I say, it's reported by CBC Radio, June 14th, 2019. Last updated, July 3rd. So it's got a 53 minute, about 54 minute segment. Like I say, radio broadcast. You can hit the uh, player portion of that at the you know, just down into the article. So if you want to listen to the whole thing in its entirety, and like I say, I suggest you do. I did. Uh, you have to know what these uh, authoritarian collectives are thinking, what's on their mind, which is why people say, oh, I never pay attention to CBC. Well, well you really, if, especially if you're someone that cares about liberty, you really should start to pay attention to what these people that want to take away those liberties are saying and what they stand for. Because in reality, if you're going to, go against these authoritarian collectivists, well, you need to really know where they're coming from, what they stand for, and what their thought processes are. This episode was originally published on June 14, 2019. When Karl Marx offered his critique of capitalism in the mid-19th century, work was a brutal endeavor. Workers had few rights, conditions were terrible, and the work itself was often dangerous and poorly compensated. But wage labor was progress compared to what came before it. And while it may have overtaken the lives of workers, it offered some hope of a better life. More than a century and a half after Marx first talked about the struggle between the ruling class and labor, the promise of capitalism, that progress was inevitable and would ultimately lead to good things for everyone, has proven empty for many people. And it seems Marx's principal critique that capitalism stands in the way of authentic emancipation is arguably more relevant than ever. So as you hear, like I say, they're already showing that they're very much proponents and very positive on Karl Marx and his critique of capitalism and how it should be destroyed and wiped out and Marxism should replace it. Which, you know, think about how that Marxism has unfolded just in the 20th century alone. 
communism, socialism, fascism, all forms of authoritarian collectivism based predominantly on Marxist ideology. And when they talk about workers, that's the thing. Prior to anything that was remotely even considered capitalism, which capitalism, look it up, folks. Don't go by what other people tell you what it means. Just look up what the genuine meaning of capitalism is. It's just economic um, exchanges, transactions, and interactions based on f free market fundamentals of free human beings being in control of their economic lives and what they value themselves or what the products of their labor or their intellect is worth. That's what the free market is, is everybody interacting voluntarily without using force, right? That's, that's what capitalism is. It's the absence of force. It's the absence of the state dictating economic interactions or transactions. So it's absolutely free from entrenched or embedded political force. It's the separation of the state and the economy. And prior to even capitalism, prior to any genuine understanding in regards to what free markets even mean, going all the way back to Adam Smith, even before that time, you know, humans always had to work to provide for themselves and their family, right? And how that happened, how that unfolded through all of human history, yeah, there were burdens placed on all of us and people suffered at every junction along that entire history, along that entire timeline. So, you know, there was always this thing, that maybe you didn't have a boss, like the proletariat, or, or say, should I say the bourgeoisie, to give you a paycheck or to pay your salary in some way, so that you are economic compensated for your work, which once again, if you enter into that voluntarily, well, that's, hey, you made that choice voluntarily to work for that employer. But like I say, prior to that, well, you had to work for yourself and your family. You had to do everything. You didn't have to just, you, the, the division of labor, you know, right? Before the division of labor, well, you had to do everything. And who was paying you? There was no pay. The only compensation you were getting was you, your ability to be able to feed yourself and your family. So, I mean, just, that's the thing with these Marxists. They, they pretend that, I guess, you know, before a capitalist, that, or before capitalism, that I guess everyone just lived so free and, and because there was no such thing as money or a proper economic system that functioned, like I say, under pure freedom, that somehow everyone back then did better before capitalism. Really? Really? I, where is this history that these people talk about? What, what, and, and even though there are some critiques of modern capitalism, but the modern capitalism is that third way where they're using capitalism as the underlying aspect to create the prosperity and the wealth with, with the Marxists or the authoritarian collectivists scooping larger and larger chunks of that at the top to spread around to what, whoever they deem is worthy of it or are part of their ideological side of the political spectrum. So once again, these folks, like I say, it all comes down to at the end of the day is these folks want to constantly have the ability to take from one person to give to another against their will. So at the end of the day, Marxists are all about using preemptive force, violence, or theft as means to the end. So that's, a, of course, and of course, an ideology based on those immoral acts or deeds, are, it's not going to work out very well for everybody, right? Like, so that's why Marxism has been proven and shown to be a complete and abstract failure. And without exception, folks, without exception. And once again, know those Nordic countries. That's the thing. People took, oh, but what about... Norway or Finland or Sweden and some of those Nordic countries in Europe. No, 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 no. Once again, ask all those people that live in those countries and they'll tell you the exact same thing. No, they're a capitalist country with a bunch of socialists taking portions of that productive wealth and income produced by the capitalists. So it's another one of those mixed systems. So no, it's not a socialist endeavor or a socialist utopia over there in Northern Europe on the west side of things, or, or even the central part. So stop, just stop, you Marxists. You know darn well that it's not even remotely honest to suggest that those Nordic countries are socialists in any way. And the more you try to convince and confuse the people that that is the case, the more you're losing the credibility and your leg to stand on. Because we do live in the age of information after all, and ignorance truly is a choice. Anyways, folks, I'll place a link to this article in the description of the video below. Like I said, I just wanted to point out, because this just more evidence, just more evidence that, yes, the people who are representative of the CBC, or at least a substantial portion of them, those who, are been, who have been major figureheads, like Paul Kennedy has been at the CBC for a long time. A lot of Canadians were raised and inundated or indoctrinated 
by the kind of rhetoric that he espoused. Now, I will say that Paul isn't the worst person ever. I, I've actually listened to some of his programs, and he is reasonable enough to bring on other people, and he has some interesting shows. But once again, underline, get through all that stuff, because I don't ever suggest, even Marxists, I don't suggest all these people that fall for these authoritarian collectivist ideologies. I don't think they're all inherently evil by any stretch of the imagination. I think some of them are just confused and confounded, and just, like I say, they've been indoctrinated into a particular ideology, and they haven't figured out a way to break free from it yet. And maybe Paul Kennedy, although I don't think he could get that far. Paul Kennedy, I will hold to a little bit higher of a standard. Because he's supposed to well, be a well-educated man and a major public figure in this country. So he should know better at the very least. There's a lot of kings I'll say, okay, you can claim ignorance for now. Paul Kennedy, no, you don't get that kind of get out of jail free card. Not for me. Not going to happen. So the fact that that's something that, like I say, a figurehead, one of, a main figurehead from the CBC wants to put forth and present. And like I said, you can, you can use anyone to push back against it. Paul Kennedy could have brought on a lot of people on that show to counteract the pro-Marxist rhetoric espoused within it. But no. At the end of the day, the message that uh, Paul and a lot of these CBC personalities want to send is, yeah, they want you to think that they're allowing some critique, but at the end of the day, they want you to also think that Marxism is actually very positive and it's a good thing and that's why a lot of Canadians adopt it and have tried to turn this country into a socialist utopia. Which as you see, not working out so good for everyone. Yeah. For some people, for the connected or the part or those who are representative of the ruling class, that's the thing, these Marxists, they're supposed to be all about going against a ruling class. But not necessarily because as we see today, they actually represent the ruling class. Paul Kennedy works for our national socialist broadcaster, right? That works under the socialist model, that forced wealth and income redistribution model. And Paul Kennedy works for that crony, crown, state-funded corporation. So, let's see. He, he, he is, at the, at, right to his core, he is a Marxist. He is an authoritarian collectivist. And that's the ideology of choice that he chooses to follow. As with a large and substantial portion of his CBC cohorts. Which is why you're continually inundated on a regular basis with pro-authoritarian collectivist rhetoric by these CBC personalities. And now you know. So at least for anyone that's watched this video, you can't claim ignorance to that particular kind of knowledge anymore. It's a Canadian Libertarian, and I love liberty.